knock out the number one rated show. That ain't on to like TV or nothing. Yeah, okay. exactly. Are you are you comedian and and then tonight or no? Yeah, yeah. I man, that one. Uh, who's that one guy? Man, that one comedy zone. They got the guys there four days. Who the heck's that guy here in Charlotte? They now I heard it coming over. It's like uh, his birthday bash or something. Yeah, comedy zone. He's there four days. They said he's there Thursday, Friday. Well, not, maybe not tonight, but I've to, never heard of him. I'm trying to think who they got in this weekend. See, if it ain't Bobcat Bobway or whatever, Bobcat I don't. Goldfoy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anybody. Him or Ryan Nagerfield. That's where it kind of ends for me, That's boy. Weird. Comedian died after that. But anyway. Well, this, it kind of ended for Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, but that guy's there four days. I thought, man, they bring a guy in for four days? Yeah, I think uh, Joey D is my, no, Joey was in for three days. Well, no, maybe I think he did a Thursday night show. I saw, Sometimes I bring people in for like four days. Wow, brother. So. I, I, they, they like stay, that. That's very world. Yeah, that's they, very world classish. They they, okay. stay, they 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 keep some of these th these guys around for a few days. That's for sure. Very good. All right. Well, well, here we go. Got my pants a little bit. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Legend of Dad. You yes. know work. You wrestle. You hear the claps. You know what time it is, George. Man, how was your weekend? Bullet, unbelievable weather here at Dad. You don't work. You studios. One day we're slushing through the snow to get here. The next day we're putting suntan lotion on. I know. I don't understand nothing. All I know is we're here. Uh, we've got our toboggans on, and we're here to do the top-rated show in the world. Uh, but before we jump in here with both feet, I want to thank everybody for coming out last week to AML show there uh, in Winston-Salem at the fairgrounds, brand-new facility. Uh, just a great, great, great turnout. I was a little worried at first because, you know, those fairgrounds have like 12 different buildings on the fairgrounds. But uh, we were able to find it. I was. Anyway, fans didn't have a problem. I did. But anyway, a great, great uh, time, Bullet. Before the show, kind of when the VIPs were coming in, I was able to get six or eight of our students here from uh, rings.com and georgesouth.com uh, training school to wrestle a little match, which was kind of neat. So the VIP people kind of got a little extra treat. Uh, it just worked out good. I didn't think it would, but it did. Uh, and with all that being said, something that just came to my mind, we had a little brief discussion in the office here tonight, and... I may be the only one that feels that way, but you know, we were talking about different places that shows get run, bullet, and I don't know what this has got to do with the show, but one thing, and I know you've seen it on Facebook where everybody made fun of this one group, and dang, I was just mad because I wasn't there. They did a show in a Walmart, and everybody kind of dogged it. It's the worst pitch. It's the worst who would that's do been this. That's been floating around for a, for a while. Yeah, yeah. but... but I, we did that I'm, already. Yeah, I mean, We've it's not... Been. I mean... But no, nobody's talking about, now I can understand maybe if you did it free, heck, I'd have done it for free, but I don't feel as negative towards that as some of the places that my my crew has been. Yeah. That's like a step up, bullet. Yeah. Uh, they actually but, have to wrestle inside. Like yeah. we, we were, uh, we when we wrestled at the Walmart, which if you search people of Walmart, you will find me, Caleb Connolly, and Cedric Alexander. <laughs> Because uh, the only changing rooms that where we could get changed for the show were the actual changing rooms in Walmart, which are centered in the middle of Walmart. So we had to walk in with the rolling bags, change in the changing rooms, and then walk back outside in our wrestling trunks and yes. wrestling gear. Now, because uh, uh, we were wrestling over where they pushed the carts in from the outside. <laughs> Like basically the cart uh, drop off. Yeah, like so well, basically uh, like that's what we wrestled. I would have preferred to be wrestling indoors because yes, at least it would have meant something. Uh, so yeah, yeah, everybody wants to talk how awful that is. Well, guess what? There is a. a I know. I know what the worse. bottom of the barrel looks yeah, like. Yeah, that's exactly right. I've been there. Uh, and I saw that that ring that was inside Walmart. You know, people had chairs, stuff like that, and I'm thinking. But everybody like hated that. That's like like the worst thing you could do in pro wrestling, and and that's like old news for us. But I mean, we were out there almost. We okay, weren't even wrestling. Calabunga <laughs> wasn't bad enough. Like we, we wasn't in like the garden center. We were like below the garden center. That's how. But anyway, so uh, but that's what made us the men that we are today, Bullet. Yeah, exactly. uh, that's why when you uh, uh, pursue your comedy career, no matter where they have you do stand up, you're prepared. Yeah, Bullet. A bar in South Carolina where nobody's paying attention. <laughs> a pizza joint in South Carolina where nobody's paying yeah, attention. Yeah. All those places. That's, Unfazed. That's very true. So, Unfazed. Uh, that was not uh, even on my mind to discuss here tonight, but I wanted to once we had a little discussion uh, in the office there about, I think, because a lot of people disliked that picture and said wrestling's dead and that's the worst thing you yeah. could ever do. And <laughs> <stuff like that. laughs> okay. But uh, I thought, well, what wait else a is new? What I, else I, is that's new? exactly right. So, anyway. 
Uh, we, at least wrestling dead in the way that you define wrestling. That's exactly right. In the way that the wrestling that it fits in the box that, that, of 1970. That, yeah, that's dead. Uh, but if you want to talk about wrestling now, the way it exists today, it's alive and well, and people are making livings that, and that's making exactly money right. off of changing the paradigm and being progressive and being innovative and being different. That's exactly right. I love that, Bullet. Oh, that, I love that. And I would like to say here as y'all's trainer and early uh, uh, guy that maybe y'all possibly looked up to that I was doing that to just test y'all, which would look good on paper, but realistically it wasn't. We just went and did a show. Yeah, it's yeah, what we did. We just need we a little bit. It's just a booking. Uh, so there's really not no theological uh, reasoning behind what we did. It's, it's it, okay. The history is written by the winners and the people that have lived <laughs> longest. So as of right now, you're going to pick one of the either. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're kind of tingling. Uh, yeah. We're tilt tottering on, on one side. But anyway, so much going on here, Bullet. Again, thank everybody for last week for coming up. Uh, I did real good with my book there, AML. Uh, met this sweet, sweet lady from Texas, believe it or not, Bullet. And, uh, you know, every now and then, uh, I just, matter of fact, I even said she was like the Loch Ness Monster, just a lot of, uh, a whole lot prettier, okay? Mm -hmm. You know how Loch Ness Monster is probably, it just pops his head up and disrupts the whole area, the whole town, then just leaves again for another 20 years. But anyway, uh, I think that sweet lady uh, actually came out behind my gimmick table to say hey. Uh, to her bullet. So very sweet, sweet lady. Good thing she got out of here because I probably this seat will probably be empty. Is what I'm saying. But anyway, that that's a little bit on the relationship. That'll be the relationship listen, episode. That listen, we'll do. George. You know, know what my favorite times of the day are is that few minutes before you get here, in the hopes that maybe you won't show up because you've got something better to do other than I'm hang trying. out with me. I'm trying so. I love that. <laughs> to paraphrase yeah. a great movie. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to, but it Although just... Although it's probably the other hey, way around. It's probably the other way around. <laughs> and I'm trying so hard, but you always went out. That's all I'm saying. Well, you know me more than any courtship, uh, any 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 family relationship, anything. So, anyway, it's your advice that has kept me strong on those late night trips. But anyway, so, so much going on, boy. I know that the Super Bowl's coming up. I'm like most people. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I know you may have saw this where... Uh, the wrestlers should have been, uh, probably were in charge of this, where the Super Bowl grounds crew actually painted both ends of the end zone yeah. Denver covers. Now, you know, I'm not too bright, and I've been hit the head a few times, but boy, don't you get, like, finish this side and then get halfway there and say, we need, you know, why are we using the same kind of paint on this end? Yeah, well, it, they're I, I completely mean, different colors. Oh, yeah. I and mean, they're, and it's they're not, not even close. It's not like you're putting, like, uh, like hey, put this... All the orange garbage garbage cans on one side, and all the, the like the the blue garbage cans on the other side. And you know, and even if it's like just put this one and this one, obviously you're gonna say, oh well, that's a different color that's over there because exactly right. you're over there. And like, oh, what are you guys working on over there? Okay, we'll work on this. You know what I'm saying? Like you are working. No, you're working on a project that takes several hours. That's exactly right. Then there's probably gonna be breaks, <laughs> and then the people working on the two opposite ends. Have to come and meet yeah. at the 50-yard line to have a cheese sandwich <laughs> or whatever or coffee. I'm like, man, yeah. it's a hot day to be a uh, paint. Paint. Right. paint. I know, especially all that orange paint. Yeah, <laughs> that orange paint's real rough. And then they go back and they keep it going. They do. And, and that's the point that I want to add here is they completed both sides. Their their advisor, their boss did not stop them halfway through, bullet. They yeah. finished and actually did a pretty good job on both ends of it. But... I'm totally like you. I mean, don't they, while they're eating that cheese sandwich and that old-fashioned Archie Buncher lunchbox that just, you know, the round shape on it just unfolds and that big old coffee. Uh, did someone say, well, how you think about them Panthers? I mean, somebody had to say, yeah. uh, who you pulling for, the Panthers or the, well, they all, they all say, well, I'm pulling for Denver and I'm pulling for Denver. I mean, anyway. And, and don't they use stencils too? Like, <laughs> isn't, like a, isn't, the, isn't how you do that, you just make a big stencil? Yeah. Like, you, you don't think they would as well, hey, you know that, Denver Broncos stencil yeah. yet? Yeah. Why do you we, need it? We, like, what? And I'm not sure whose stadium it was to begin with. I mean, I don't know if it was a car. I don't know. I know they're playing out there, but uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe one side was already a little bit orange, and they just figured, what the heck? You know, but anyway, you got to get through like 18 buckets of paint and say, we need more paint before I do this. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, just say, what the heck, we'll just finish. But anyway, uh, I don't even know why I even said that, but they will, I think, have both ends, uh, the good colors before the Super Bowl. 
Uh, and of course, this coming weekend, I got, I almost ran my mouth and forgot. Uh, Sonny and Cher will be together, we'll be correct? Together. Yes. We'll be together. This coming Saturday in Seagrove, um, Seagrove uh, Super Show again. Yes. Bullet for the knockout little girls softball, excuse me, team. Then they, they use these proceeds to go all over the country and play in those tournaments. Those softball tournaments and outfits and uniforms are not free. Uh, and uh, there's a good possibility that the fans will actually get to see uh, Bullet Jake Manning and Mr. Number One in our Forget Nikita and, and Magnum in their best of seven. This is like the best of like 700. Yes. I think it's like the best of seven. I think like 699 that we've worked each other. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, that will be this Saturday, Seagrove Super Show in Seagrove. Uh, we hope everybody comes out. The best out. of not getting hurt by a goof. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. just, we just stay together on the island. We'll be okay. And I'll always cherish that moment in that town from, of course, last year. Remember when you were in the ring, mm -hmm. you're one of the play. you got to use this in stand-ups somewhere, but where I was taking my time to get to the ring. I think I, I, don't know, I was yelling at somebody in the back or something, and you were in the ring. And then, of course, the announcer said, Pulled an audible. Thought, said, he, thought he had yeah. to cover for time. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. And he said, oh, gosh, uh, uh, security, please come to the back. Uh, George has actually been jumped. Uh, we need to call an ambulance. And he called an ambulance. And, and you, from, from the rain, knew that that didn't happen. Yeah. Because it it was like, I think you it said, too much, way too much work. Yeah, that's way for, too much work for George. <laughs> what are you doing? So he'll, the be minute, out say, he'll be out in two minutes. <laughs> so Give the minute time. I come out the door, that's when I heard you say, I, that didn't happen. That's too much work for joy. Yeah. So, uh, of course, my pain turned to joy when I heard that. So, anyway, uh, we will hope to capture, recapture that moment this coming week. So, anyway, a lot of stuff going on before we hit the idiot bag. What, um, you are anywhere this uh, okay. about going on? Uh, I got a couple of things. I'm going to be at uh, the Greenville Comedy Zone again this Thursday. Oh, wow. I was just there last Thursday. Uh, that was a last minute booking. I got booked last Wednesday, last Thursday for that, but I got booked on Wednesday. But now I'm going to be back there again. So, two two weekends, uh, two Thursdays wow. in a row, the Greenville Comedy. That's South Carolina, yeah. right? Greenville, yeah, South, South Carolina. South Carolina. Yep. It's a beautiful yep. club, downtown Greenville. Like, that's that's a really nice club, and people really need to start coming out to that for comedy if you live in South Carolina. Um, next week, I will be in Wilmington, North Carolina. I, oh. I, I won't be here with you. I will be in Wilmington next Tuesday. Oh, wow. So I'm at the Dead Crow Comedy Comedy Club. I think it's a comedy club. But uh, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there next Tuesday. And then uh, I think I might have something next Thursday. I don't know. I, next week's kind of hazy for me yet, too. But I got Greenville and Wilmington coming up for me. So. Uh, and that's our uh, one of our great fan, Charlie Dreamer's little hometown down yes. that way, right? I always so, love so going to Wilmington. Return, returning back down there. So yes. I'll never, ever forget Wilmington. It always strikes a Crockett reference to me, as I remember, which was a long trip before they made good road down there for Jim Crockett Promotions, which we used to run the Legion Stadium in Wilmington, and what we would do, the underneath guys in Crockett, to save gas, of course, you know, the Four horsemen and all them were making all kind of money, but what we would do is the underneath card uh, guys would actually ride together, which that's unheard of nowadays, but uh, what, so one, and this always sticks out in my mind, so the semi-main event for that particular night was me and Gary Roll as the gladiators against Kendall Wyndham and Denny Brown. I'll never forget this. While everybody else was flying into Wilmington, there was only four people that were supposed to drive, and I just named them to you, and two of them wore a mask, the gladiators, uh, Denny and Kendall. So, anyway, what would we do that any underneath starving guy would think? We all rode together. Yeah. So we drove together, all rode down there together, and it was my call, I'll take responsibility, as we got ready to pull in, Wilmington Stadium, uh, Legion Stadium, there in Wilmington, the choice came, do we either put our hoods on or do we leave our hoods off, okay? Now, we're talking, uh, me and Gary's up front, Kendall and, and uh, uh, Denny's in the back, okay? Mm -hmm. So I made the call, well, let's don't put our hoods on. Right? Nobody knew who we were anyway, okay? Yeah. But I thought, in my thinking, okay, and I was told later that I probably shouldn't think, but I thought, in my thinking, it's going to look more obvious with two masked men and one blonde-headed guy and a brown, and Denny and Kendall in the back, okay? Mm -hmm. So maybe if we didn't put the mask on, it just looks like four people riding into... You were hanging on as a Kendall. Uh, th and th that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So that that's, I mean, a, that's a good logic. That I sure is. Use that. Uh, and I thought we'll be less conspicuous if Batman and Robin didn't have their mask on, okay? Yeah. So I made the call. 
Of course, they put all the heat on me, but I made the call. Yeah, if Alfred's hanging out with Batman. Yeah, that's exactly. That's a uh, little. Then you're like, well, what's going on here? That's Why right. is Bruce Wayne's butler? That's exactly with, with, with Bruce Batman, Wayne. That's exactly Batman. right. As opposed, you know, so you're exactly. you were just trying to be Kendall Wyndham's Alfred. That's exactly that's right. Oh, to do. I love that illustration. I got goosebumps. All or of a no, sudden, no, boy. Kendall would be your Alfred to yes. your Batman. Yes. So. so I made the call, and of course, fans are looking at this saying. Y'all were nuts that think now, but back in the day, it was really very kayfabe ish and all that. But anyway, I made the, the box that doesn't yes, exist anymore. That's exactly what we right. referred the, to. The, callback from the before. toothpaste is already out of the tube, as Cornette said. Yes. But anyway, at that time, there was still a little bit of toothpaste still left in the tube. I made the call. Let's just leave the hoods off. When we get in, then we all split up. We go to the dressing rooms. Everything's fine. The gladiators will come out later, which, anyway. Nobody in the vicinity of Wilmington, North Carolina, even knew except one man, Mr. J.J. Dillon. He saw it. Oh, my goodness. Did I get yelled at? Did I get yelled at? So, and I accepted the fault, the responsibility, and that I was told that I probably shouldn't think no more, or make any more calls, that we probably should have took two at least two cars down, uh, and I learned a valuable lesson. So, anyway, uh, so... Uh, I learned a very valuable lesson that uh, they put all the heat on me. Uh, and I, But that, anyway, it was my call. I screwed it up. We should have left the hoods on, which I thought to this day, Alfred riding around with Batman would have been suspicious. Yes. Right? So anyway, that makes me feel so much better well, after all these years. After all these I feel years. So stupid. Get that off so, your chest. Uh, anyway, uh, with all that being said, an idiot of the week bullet, you know, I try uh, so hard. This is a real quick one that just happened today, matter of fact, when there's so many, I mean, it has so many runners up. I... I thought of a very funny story that I'd heard today. That's like the Iowa caucus. <laughs> so many runners oh, up. Oh, that's exactly Boom! right. Boom! That's exactly Line right. Them up. Uh, Line them the up. The one that I, she was just too sweet of an old lady to make it into an idiot bag. Not that I would not throw an old lady in an idiot bag, but this is kind of sweet. You have. Uh, at the bank where I go to, boy, they, the drawer was actually broke. I mean, the, the, the drive through gimmick. So they called the maintenance people. The maintenance man had to pull in. Uh, you know that that aisle, and he put out these. I'm the, the biggest orange cone you'd ever seen. So yeah. anyway, we're over here waiting, whatever, to go through the bank. Anyway, now the old lady now the old lady pulls in behind the orange cone, okay, and she's waiting. I mean, she's waiting for the cones there and the guy's truck. The greatest thing I've ever seen. Now she will not go and eat it back just because I felt kind of sorry. She actually got out and moved the cone. She thought somebody just left the cone, bullet. So she's still waiting. I'm talking like 40 minutes later, this old lady is still waiting to, for this van to move so she can make a deposit. Finally, someone, the sweet lady, comes out of the bank, tells this old lady, ma'am, we just want to inform you that the drawer is broke, okay? And you probably need to go over to, like, the uh, tube yeah, thing. Yeah, the tube, the tube thing, which the old lady said, oh, I'm so sorry. She, was very, she just didn't realize she was very apologetic. She actually said, well, can you put the comb back, then?" So that's a true story. So the old lady actually pulled over to the tube thing and just had that young lady from the bank put the tube, the, 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 the comb back behind the maintenance truck. But that's not idiot back stuff. That's just, we're all headed that way, older, a uh, little senile-ish. But anyway, a uh, lady just thought that somebody just put a cone in her way. But anyway, that's not it. This is what did it today, boy. I am trying in my older years, which I was never a gentleman before, bullet in my life, I just basically, you know, hated everybody. Uh, but anyway, so today, for instance, as I was paying for my gas, I saw this lady uh, come walking in the door, and I thought, this time, I'm going to surprise myself, first of all, and I'm going to be a gentleman. No, uh, she, you're saying, yeah, because she was attractive. No, she wasn't that all attractive. That had nothing to do with this. I'm just being a gentleman. Common courtesy. Common courtesy. Okay, bullet, which, which is gone in this day and time. So, I thought, before this lady gets here, I'm actually going to take a step out in faith, and I'm going to hold the door for this lady. I don't even know how to hold a door for somebody, but I've watched enough John Wayne movies, I think I got it. So, Bullet, even though I need to pay for my gas, I needed to, to get out of there. I stopped the world, and I actually held that door, which is kind of, you know, some of the doors are heavy as heck. That's why I pull. Anyway, I held that door open. It was the greatest scene out of uh, some movie. Very Tom Cruise-ish. Anyway, Bullet, I want you to know, this miserable lady, she just walked right by. Bullet now, you say, okay, George, okay, what's your point? She didn't say, thank you. She didn't say, help, please. She didn't say, get out of my way, fool. Nothing. She just walked in, and I'm almost, and I, I know we don't do it to get a thank you, Bullet. That ain't my point. 
my point is, there should have been a thank you, shouldn't they? Uh, but so I'm sitting here holding it, regretting is what I'm getting at. Before I throw her and eat it back, regretting that I thought to be a gentleman. Okay, and bullet it has been documented that most people that come back later and blow up a store uh, was triggered with something like that. That's all I'm saying. Not that I'm gonna go blow up a store. Well, okay, especially in this uh, day and age, everybody's that, right. on the edge. That's right. So when you when you and you know everybody's just looking for a reason to punch somebody, really, bullet, and so. Uh, this lady is not helping. I guess what I'm getting at before I throw this old lady, that not the well, younger lady, actually, she wasn't that old, uh, before I throw her into that either. I mean, how bad can your life be that you can't just say thank you? And that's not why I did it. Don't well, get me wrong. Or the smile and the nod. Just oh, the, uh, yeah, boy, I would have you know. did, you know, like the wrestler thing, you know. Uh, I wouldn't have took the shook hand now. If she tried to shake my hand like the wrestler did, that would have been a different story. But, boy, I'm telling you, she didn't nod. She didn't say, hmm. <laughs> She didn't say, I got it myself, some woman lived thing, you know, whatever. Uh, please, please, please get him out of here. Nothing, bullet. She didn't even stop and say, after you, sir. You know, let me hold the door for you. You don't know nowadays, boy, you got to be careful. She didn't say nothing. So, uh, I have to go back to the drawing board on being a gentleman. Because that lady kind of spoiled it. Exactly. Okay? But my, my point, bullet, was who else has she made meet the rest of the day that she is possibly going to make somebody miserable? Seriously. Uh, More likely your husband. <laughs> but anyway, so the moral of the story today, bullet, uh, from this episode, is it's okay to say thank you because I know that us here at Dad, you don't work, you Russell Studios say thank you a lot when you purchase the second greatest book of it all works. time. Which is available at highspots.com. good, boy. If you want to know more about what me and George are doing this weekend, especially since we'll be together, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Manscout Manning or on Twitter at Manscout Manning. This has been another edition of Great Dad show. You Don't Work, You Wrestle. Great show, Bullet. Great show. And it came out of nowhere. Yeah. That was like Dr. <laughs> Dropdown Sunset. Oh, it was, one, two, buddy. three. <laughs> I wasn't talking that over in the back. We no, got no, that right. No, no big comeback. Just <laughs> sunset flip. Done. <laughs> we just went right into it, bullet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, good show, boy. Good show.